This is not the first time I've written about my grandfather. I made a book about him when I was in third grade, um, a little picture book biography. Um, I've also written about him many times since then, kind of trying to find the heart of his story and trying to figure out with all the complexity and everything that has happened, what would be the right way to treat um, his story and kind of the feelings that he was trying to evoke in his work and the essence of his work. Most of my memories with my grandfather happened with my siblings and my cousins all around us. What I really remember was being in his home. We were there quite a bit. His home was a lot like these spaces where there were white carpets, white walls, some beautiful, very carefully selected art. And we were very active kind of hippie children. And so we would come in, we would take our shoes off, and then we would just tear through this fully carpeted house. The overwhelming feeling I had with being around our grandfather was that he loved being in the presence of his big family, and that gave him incredible joy. Whenever I go into a building that's my grandfather's, there's an instant feeling of kind of familiarity. A lot of them feel like his home, you know, and there's kind of a feeling of the color being aligned, the shape of the windows, the amount of light passing through, kind of the, the height of the guardrail, even just kind of things that you pick up subconsciously as a child from spending so much time in his home. I can recognize any building of his when I walk in based on the feeling that I have, and that feels really special. For my grandfather, when he was young, a lot of spaces were not spaces where he was welcome. You know, a lot of buildings were white spaces, and he was made to feel unwelcome in those places. So he wanted to kind of address that and make these buildings, these university buildings and these religious spaces and airport terminals where people from everyday walks of life could come and feel like themselves and feel welcome. And my art, both my murals and my children's books, I, I try to do the same thing. He was very much a technician and he had exquisite skills for rendering buildings, rendering perspective. That's never been kind of my approach or my thing. I'm really kind of a painter at heart and I wanted to find a way to make his work and my work fit together. I needed to use some other form just in painting to kind of bring out the graphic nature of his buildings and the pattern. So I used a lot of collage, which was very challenging because, you know, any given building might have 60 windows on a facade or something like that. but. I felt like that was the way I could most closely um, reach his work. I think that for my grandfather, being an outsider in the architectural establishment, you know, being from a public university, coming from a low-income family and immigrant community, not being a white man, he was definitely inclined to create spaces that were more democratic and create spaces that appealed to each individual's humanity. He wasn't thinking about overwhelming or overpowering as was the kind of architectural tradition of the time. He was interested in the kind of human experience and how his buildings could uplift people. And I think that that came a lot from his background. He wanted to create spaces where people felt like they could think their best thoughts and they could feel their most aspirational feelings and their imaginations could be activated. And what I hope the reader will take away is as you walk through your day, how do you experience the spaces where you're in? How do you think the architect intended you to feel when you sat in your classroom or when you walked into the building that you live in? And so now when we think about creating a more just and equal world, what kind of spaces should we create and how should they look? My grandfather was a child and kind of grew up at a time in this country, you know, unfortunately a time that's endured when to be Asian was to be unseen. He decided that he would be seen and he carved out the space for himself by doing these kind of spectacular things with the gifts that he had combined with his work ethic. That made him incredibly memorable to a lot of people and it made him famous. But what I really hope is that when kids read this book, they'll know that that was his journey and that was his way of kind of forming a place for himself, but that to be important and to be seen in this country, all you need to do is be born and all you need to do is be yourself. That you don't have to be this exceptional, amazing, world-class architect, you just have to be yourself and that's enough.